This concept is called input-output analysis. So that is the concept I'm covering. Input, output, analysis. So input-output analysis is a technique used to analyze the inputs and outputs in various sectors. It is based on the presumption or the assumption that there is no sector in an economy that can operate in isolation or that can operate alone. And thus, the sectors, they are interdependent. They depend on one another. So this concept, the person who came up with this concept is called Leontief. Leontief said that the output from one sector is used by the sec by the sector itself and other producing sectors plus also the non-producing sectors. So the output from one sector is used by the sector itself and also other sectors which are producing and also the non-producing sectors like the final consumers. Under this topic, input-output analysis, there's something you want to understand or you should understand some of the terminologies used in the concept input-output analysis. The first term I would like to just explain is the intermediate demand. And intermediate demand is the demand from within or demand from the producing sectors. Then we have the final demand. Final demand is a combination, or final demand is the demand from the non-producing sectors. So, e.g. the demand from, or for final consumption. That is what is called the final demand. The demand from non-producing sectors. We also have the total output. Total output is a combination of the intermediate demand and the final demand. Then we need to understand the models used in this concept input-output analysis, which we call input-output uh, models. We have, number one, closed input-output model. And this, the number two, is, is the open input output model. So I will start by defining or explaining briefly what is a closed input output model. This is a model where all what is produced is consumed by the producing sectors. I said this is a model where all what is produced is consumed by the producing sectors. Then we have the open input-output model. And this one is a model where all what, where what is produced is consumed by both the producing and the non-producing sectors. So Leon Tief say the total output, the way we have defined total output, is a combination of the intermediate demand plus the final demand. You see, let total output be x, then intermediate demand be xa, plus the final demand be d, then make x the subject. When you make x the subject, then this uh, will be x, then this part of this equation comes on this other side, should be x minus xa is equals to d. Then, you can see x is common, factor it out, then into brackets, then 1, so that when you multiply x times 1 to be x, minus x times a to be a, so here will be half the a is equals to d. Then, you want x on one side, divide both sides by 1 minus a, 1 minus a. This cancels out, then your x is equals to d, all over 1 minus a, which we can write as d into bracket 1 minus l raised to power negative 1. So this is the formula on how to get the total 
uh, output. So total output is equals to D into 1 minus A raised to negative 1. Where this D is the final demand, this X is the total output, 1 is the identity matrix, A is the technical coefficient matrix. 1 minus A gives you the Leontes matrix, then 1 minus A raised to negative 1, this is, means inverse of the Leontes matrix. I right? have said X is the total output, D is the final demand, 1 is the intermediate, is the, is the, this is the identity matrix. A is the technical coefficient matrix, then 1 minus A gives you the Leontes matrix, then 1 minus A raised to negative 1 is inverse of the Leontes matrix. Allow me to just look at a question very fast so that we can understand what is uh, what happened. The, I am using a Castanet past paper. These Castanet past papers, you can just download them. The quantitative analysis past paper. I will start with the November 2019 question number 1C, the CPA, QA, or quantitative analysis. November 2019, question number 1, 1C. November 2019, question number 1C. So without wasting time, I'm going to read the question, the, this question. To read... A small economy has two sectors, X1 and X2, producing a single product for their internal and external demand in units, as summarized in the following transaction matrix. Production sectors were given and the party sector on the consumer's demand. Then we are told the projected consumer demand changes to 400 units and 800 units for sector X1 and X2 respectively required. The required gross output of each sector in order to meet the new demand, which is six months. So this is what we are given. This is my past paper here. So we are given the party sector. We, are told we have two sectors. We have X1. We have sector X1. We have X2. And then we have the party sector. They are told called the purchase sector. We also have here party sector. X1, X2 party sector, then we have X1, X2, these are the sectors we are having, the production sectors. Then we have the final, final consumer, or the final, it is called the consumer demand in this question. Consumer demand, which is the final demand. Consumer demand. So you have the consumer demand. So you have 500 here, 600, 800, 1400, 200 units, and then 400. Remember, total output is a combination. You need, you need to get the total output first. So I will get the total output column. And total output of a sector, because this is what happens. What has been produced by X1 sector, X1 is buying... Uh, that output from itself, 500 units, X2 is purchasing 800 units, final consumer, the consumer's demand is again 400 units. So if you want to know the total output, because the assumption is total input is equal to total output also under this concept, so it is a comp the total output is a combination of the intermediate, intermediate demand will be a combination of those two, then plus this is the final demand. So if you add this one and this one, which is 500 plus 800 plus 200, which is equivalent to 1500, is the total number of units which were produced by X1. X2, whatever it produced, X1 purchased 600 of it. X2 again purchased 1500. Final consumer, they purchased 8400. So if you want to know the total of production of X2, which will be 600 plus 1400, which is 2,000, plus 4,000, sorry, plus 400, which is 2,400. Then after getting the total output, get the technical coefficient matrix. Technical coefficient matrix. So this is a matrix 
showing the inputs of a sector you comparing it with what it produced or with its output now this is the purchase or the input of x1 x1 just inputted or used 500 out of 1500 so you'll have 500 out of 1500 and it also used to 600 again and its production was 1500 so it also purchased 600 but it had produced 15. you go to x2 sector it produced 24 this is x2 total output is 2400 but this is the column for each product for its inputs or its purchases so it will be 800 divided by the total of each production or output which is 2400 then 1400 divided by again the output of 2400 this gives you the technical coefficient matrix which i'm going to have here technical coefficient matrix that is a technical coefficient matrix we just do that one very first all right so uh, let me just use my calculator here we do this question so we have uh, 500 when you divide 500 a uh hard -huh, then by 1500 I'm, try, I'm getting 0 0.333 so you use two decimals 0 0.33 then 600 you divide by 1500 uh, I'm getting 0 0.4 so 0 0.40 then we have 800 divided by 2400 again I think it's 0 0.33 then 1400 when you divide by 2400 then 0 0.58 so that is the technical coefficient matrix then after that remember you need to get the inverse total output is what is required is equals to the dem final demand into one minus a raised to power negative one this is our a the technical coefficient matrix is our a so our a is equals to this the technical coefficient matrix so we know identity matrix is a matrix whose primary diagonal elements are one so let's get the leontives matrix first which is one minus a leontives matrix which is 1 minus a so 1 is the identity matrix if this is uh, the a is our 2 by 2 matrix that is 2 rows 2 columns even your identity matrix which is represented by this 1 it should be a 2 by 2 so and that's how we write the identity matrix the primary diagonal elements which is these ones here yeah, this is the primary diagonal this secondary diagonal primary diagonal elements are 1 so if you want to get the determinant of the such a matrix you'll realize it is one because determinant is product of the primary diagonal which is one times one which is one minus product of secondary which is zero times zero which is zero one minus zero will be one that is why we use this one here for identity matrix then from there you less the a and our a is 0 0.33 there 0 0.33 0 0.40 0 0.58 so then this will give, uh, will give us our I, the Leontis matrix 1 minus 0 0.33 is 0 0.67 0 minus 0 0.33 is minus 0 0.33 0 minus 0 0.40 is negative 0 0.40 then we have 1 minus 0 0.58 is 0 0.42 so that is the Leontis matrix get inverse of that Leontis matrix that is the next thing because it's 1 minus a, but now we need the inverse of it. So for inverse, what you need to do, first thing is obtain the determinant. For inverse, the first thing, get the determinant, which is product of primary diagonal PPD. Product of primary diagonal minus product of secondary diagonal. So this is what happens. Primary diagonal product is 0 0.67 times 0 0.42. 0 0.67 times 0.42 you less secondary negative 4.0.4 sorry times negative 0.33 so let me work out this my determinant that will help in the bracket then 0.67 multiply by 0.42 close the bracket minus open another bracket negative 0.40 times negative 0.33 and the truth is I'm getting 0 
0.1494. So that is my determinant, and which is the first step when you are getting the concept or when you are getting the determinant or the total output, the first step, get the Leontis matrix. Okay, the first one is said get the technical, which is here the A. After getting the technical coefficient matrix, the Leontis matrix, which is 1 minus A, 1 minus A, then get the inverse of this. And to get the inverse, step number one, obtain the determinant first, which we have, then get the inverse, what we call the inverse definition. I'm going to wrap this part of the question here, or this part of the body here, so that we can uh, write this side here. So I will have, I will have the equation, then the inverse of the Leontief's matrix. So for inverse, what you normally do, interchange the primary diagonal 0 0.67 and 0 0.42. So here it was 0 0.67, but instead 0.42 will just come there. Then where you had 0 0.42, 0 0.67 comes there, so you interchange that way. Change sign of secondary, so this is interchange primary diagonal, change signs of secondary. Secondary we had 0.33, so it will be positive because here it was negative. Here it was negative 0 0.40, now it will be positive 0 0.40. Then multiply this matrix by 1 over the determinant, and the determinant is here, 0 0.1494, so 0 0.1494. So that is the inverse of the Leontief's matrix. But remember, this formula, short output is D, that is the final demand, into 1 minus A, raised to negative 1. And all this means the inverse of the Leontief's matrix, which is here, this is the inverse. So total output will be the final demand, and the question said, so you can read that part where the final demand will be told, the projected consumer's demand changes to 400, so it will be 400 consumer's demand, the final demand is 400 and 800 for X1 and X2 respectively. And then the examiner required their gross output in which is their OMA for each sector in order to meet the demand. So you multiply this with the Leontief's inverse matrix. And here we have it, 0 0.42, I put it there, 0 0.33, 0 0.40, 0.67 then 1 into 0 0.1494 so first this is now this multiplication of two matrices for you to multiply two matrices the number of columns in the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix so that is the policy or the rule of multiplication of matrices so after that, you will multiply first row, first column, you'll get, this is the column for x1, then you divide by 0 0.1494, first row, first column, then don't forget to divide by 0 0.1494, gives you the output for x1, first row, second column, divided by 0 0.1494, which is the determinant, gives you the output for x2. So let me just do that one very fast. So it will be 400 times 0 0.42, 400 times 0.42 plus, 800 times 0 0.40, 800 times 0 0.40. I'm getting 488, but divide that by 0 0.1494, 0 0.1494, and I'm getting 3266, 3266.3989 units. And then I multiply the other one now, first row but second column, which is uh, 400, you multiply by 0.33, 400 times 0 0.333, 400 times 0 0.33 plus 800, 800 times 0 0.67, 0 0.67. I'm getting 185.6 by divided by 0 0.1496. No, sorry, 0 0.1494 divided by 0 0.1494, and I'm getting 1242, 1242.3025. So that is a question which came in the first paper and it required the total output for the two sectors, X1 and X2. And I've given you, I've shown you how to do it. And for more information, you can just contact me. You can just contact me through the number 0714-023691. I can show you how to do the 3 by 3 I can show you to do matrices. I can show you to do Markov analysis in the topic, how to do functions, and then I'll, I, I help you in and tackling your exam. For custom students, those who are doing uh, quantitative analysis,